a consolidated B-24 Liberator known as Black Cat, was the last American bomber to be shot down over Germany during World War II. On the morning of April 21st, 1945, days before the end of the war, the 466 Bombardment Group sent 137 B-24s to a mission in Salzburg, Austria. The operation should have been cancelled before takeoff because of poor weather conditions, but the group still left the base in Norfolk, England to carry out their 230th mission. The squadron soon realized the endeavor was impossible, and the pilots were forced to return. However, as they flew over the heavily defended city of Regensburg, they encountered heavy resistance. The Liberators would give it their all against a desperate enemy ready to put up a frenzied and hopeless charge that missed most of its targets. But the Black Cat wouldn't be so lucky. Last mission. By April of 1945, there was no doubt that the Allies would soon win the war, but General Dwight D. Eisenhower and the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force fathomed that Hitler and his loyal followers would attempt a last stand in the Alps region near Berchtesgaden. As the European strategic air war was already over, the Allied forces wanted to prevent the remaining German soldiers from concentrating in Bavaria and eventually counterattacking. A last mission was then hatched merely days before victory in Europe Day. At 6.30 a.m. on April 21st, 137 B-24 heavy bombers from the 466th Bombardment Group took off from the Royal Air Force Adelbridge base in Norfolk, England, en route to Salzburg, Austria, intending to bomb a key railway bridge. The B-24 Liberator, dubbed Black Cat, commanded by First Lieutenant Richard Farrington, was one of thousands produced by Ford Motor Company at Willow Run, and it would lead the 3rd Squadron. According to a report from the Weather Scouting Force, four hours after the squadron took off, they notified the command pilot about a, quote, solid cloud with rime ice from 15,000 to 25,000 feet. A subsequent radio message tried to convince him to recall the mission, but as the report concluded, quote, the bomber force made every effort to attack the target, and their determination was highly commendable. Still, at approximately 10.30 a.m., the mission had to be canceled due to heavy clouds and thunderstorms in the area. Furthermore, as the report stated, quote, the weather was as briefed. It's believed that this mission never should have been dispatched in view of the forecast and the actual conditions. The 466 was ordered to turn around, but as pilot William Propp later told researcher Chris Brassfield in a letter, quote, when the abort turn was ordered by Colonel Bruno Feiling, my navigator called and told me a left turn would take us right over Regensburg, a heavy flak area. I told my navigator to call the lead ship, which he did, only to catch hell for breaking radio silence. Bad luck. Against the advice of several navigators in the formation, the lead aircraft followed a return course just above Regensburg, a heavily defended South German city. The city was also home to the Messerschmitt factory, the first major target of the 8th Air Force in August of 1943. Suddenly, at 20,000 feet above the city, the fleet met eight bursts of flak, but only one of them hit a target the unlucky Black Cat. A statement from Bombardier 2nd Lieutenant Christ D. Manners read, quote, Our plane was hit by flak over Regensburg, Germany, on April 21st, 1945. Within 10 seconds, the plane was on fire and starting into a spin. The left wing was torn off by the shell. All interphone communications failed, and I was unable to determine the disposition of my fellow crew members. Due to the fact that I was seated on the floor, with my legs extended into the nose wheel well, I was able to drag myself out. After escaping from the ship, I dropped several thousand feet in a freefall. I opened my chute at 10,000 feet. I saw the wings and rudders of the ship floating down to earth. I saw the wreckage burning on the ground about three miles from my position. The Black Cat was the last American bomber to be shot down in the European theater in World War II, and it was the only casualty of the failed Salzburg air raid. As a witness of the incident, Bell Prop's letter recounted, quote, I think I will never forget the image of Black Cat being hit and going down. She was flying as the third squadron lead. In the turn to abort Black Cat, it slid underneath my deputy squadron lead until it seemed right off my left wing, underneath of course. I can still see the flames coming out of the bomb bay just before they tell me it exploded. As a shell struck the Black Cat's left wing, the aircraft irremediably crashed into the pastoral fields of Oberkinkoven. Only tail gunner Albert Seredarian and bombardier Chris Manners survived out of a 12-man crew. The Black Cat's radio operator, Howard Glenn Goodner, 
had written a letter to his family a few weeks before while on a break on the British shore. In a bittersweet note, Goodner wrote, quote, Just hoping the war ends soon and we can all get home again. Tragedy A missing aircrew report, or MACR, signed by two pilots from the lead and trailing squadrons, confirmed the previously reported weather and visibility conditions, and added, quote, No cloud cover below the aircraft, scattered middle clouds, visibility down 20-30 miles. While the rest of the world rejoiced about the end of the war on May 8th, the War Department communicated the Black Cat tragedy to the crew's families. However, the accounts had been unclear, and it was initially thought that three crew members had survived. But Prop indicated that his crew only reported two shoots coming out of Black Cat. Manor's testimony continued, quote, I saw one shoot besides mine. That was the shoot of Sergeant Albert Ceridarian, my tail gunner. No other shoots were seen. Sergeant Ceridarian and I were taken prisoner immediately after reaching the ground. It's my belief that all other crew members were killed in the crash. Sergeant Ceridarian was caught in the spin and remained motionless in the ship. Only when the fuselage broke behind the camera hatch was he able to fall out. He told me that he had seen Sergeant Brennan and Sergeant Peterson, the waste gunners, making a futile attempt to reach the rear hatch exit. At the time of the above incident, Captain Weezer was in the co-pilot seat, which, in my estimation, made his chances for escape almost impossible. The above statement contains the facts of the incident as I saw and lived them. Both survivors were taken as prisoners by the Germans, but they were released a few weeks later. The body of radio operator Howard Glenn Goodner was found by 19-year-old Maria Vitek near the Bavarian village of Sharmaching, surrounded by bombs and oxygen tanks that had fallen from the aircraft. Decades later, Goodner's nephew, Thomas Childers, would write a book called Wings of Morning to immortalize the story of the Black Cat's crew. In it, he chronicled the events of that unfortunate day and revealed, quote, The plane being shot down at the very end of the war, it has haunted my family for so many years, and I finally went to Germany and found the crash site. When his grandmother passed away in 1991, Childers cleared out her house and came across more than 300 letters Goodner had sent during the war. As a historian specialized in German culture and politics, Childers had found a treasure. He then put aside his academic research and dived into his uncle's story. He went to Bavaria to meet Maria Wittig, and the old lady was able to recognize Goodner from pictures. She said, quote, I can see him before me. The incident also affected many other lives. Robert Layton, the pilot's cousin, expressed, quote, My family just never got over it. My aunt, Richard's mother, never could move out of her house until the day she died a few years ago. She wasn't mental, but she just couldn't get it out of her head that Dickie might have been in an institution all these years. She thought he'd come home, and she would have moved. He'd never be able to find us. The author also discovered that not only was Black Cat the last bomber shot down over Germany before the declaration of peace, but that the crew shouldn't have flown that morning. The tragedy that cost the lives of ten brave men could have been avoided. As Prop wrote in his letter, quote, The human interest story is that most of the crew were on their final mission, and so near the end of the war, too. In their memory. The event's repercussions have rippled throughout the decades. Childers recounted, quote, This farmer started scratching around in the dirt, and he pulled out a 50 caliber machine gun bullet. I was speechless. Every year when they plow, parts of the plane come to the surface. The survivors of the 466th never forgot their fellow airmen and wished to memorialize their tragic fate on a postage stamp. It was a long shot, but they submitted a petition to the U.S. Postal Service. David Failer, executive director of Stamp Services, explained, quote, We get 50,000 people a year who say, I've got the best idea ever for a stamp. We actually release about 25 or 30 subjects for commemorative stamps each year. You can figure the math. But the Black Cat incident was worth it, and in 2005, the stamp depicting the flying aircraft was released. In addition, a memorial marking the site of the crash near Oberhinkofen still stands across the ocean. The plaque displays the names of the departed, and sometimes the sympathetic residents place candles to honor them. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more compelling historical stories. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below and if you'd like to see a particular story featured in our videos.